Hi, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jaleesa Kenyon, and I'm the Social Sciences Librarian here at the University of Idaho. And what I'm going to be talking with you about today is Qualcoder. Qualcoder is a qualitative data analysis application that's written in Python 3 and Qt6, which for me, uh, those are kind of just jargony words that don't mean a lot to me. Um, but this tool is really cool and offers an option to learn how to do qualitative data analysis. If maybe you don't have the money to spend on a proprietary piece of software, or you want a little bit more flexibility in what you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, and the first screen that we're gonna see uh, is going to be uh, the Qualcoder page, um, the online version of this. So Qualcoder is, I'm gonna put this link in the chat so everyone can visit this later. Qualcoder is different than many other uh, qualitative data analysis applications because it's completely free of charge and all of its code is openly available on GitHub. Qualcoder is easy-ish to use. There's a little bit of a learning curve jumping into any new piece of software and Qualcoder doesn't have a lot of the same uh, features and kind of usability uh, features as some of the paid software like in vivo or things like that. Um, but overall, it's pretty easy to learn. The uh, GitHub page includes a wiki, which steps you through how to install Qualcoder and everything that you can do with the software, from adding files to adding attributes and demographic data, coding text, uh, running reports, et cetera. And we're going to step through a few of those things today, just so you can get an idea of what this software looks like. Qualcoder also works online and it's not tied to a specific computer or license. So anyone could install it on multiple computers if they're working maybe on a desktop in their office, but then they want the data available uh, on their laptop. They can do that and just have their data saved on a USB or some type of cloud server where they could then download that data. It's also multi-platform. It's on Linux, Windows, and Mac. Uh, so if you change operating systems, you can always import that project data and just reinstall Qualcoder. Uh, Qualcoder continues to update and make changes. Uh, the creator does, as well as uh, collaborators who are um, working with this code themselves. They make suggestions, and those are often implemented into the Qualcoder uh, code. Qualcoder also supports open standards. Uh, according to their wiki, they support the REFI uh, dash QDA standard, uh, which allows users of Qualcoder to uh, import and export their code books and their projects and share them with colleagues or, and then put those code books uh, and projects into other uh, computer assisted qualitative data analysis software and vice versa. There are still a few bugs if you're trying to maybe export something from NVivo or another piece of software and import it into Qualcoder. They're still working through those things. Um, but it tends to work uh, pretty smoothly for code books. Okay, so for my demo today, what I'm going to do is step you through just an example of how you could use Qualcoder and some of its features. The data that I'm using are some transcripts from a research project that a few of us in this physical space in the Data Hub actually uh, conducted with uh, faculty here on campus, uh, looking at their research support and data management needs. The portion of the transcripts that I'm using don't include any identifying information, and I've changed the demographic, uh, their demographic details, so it can't be connected back to the actual uh, interviewee. So the first thing that we would need to do if you wanted to use Qualcoder is install it on your own system. They offer a few different options depending on the platform you're using. So if you're using Windows, the easiest thing to do is visit this wiki page or visit this GitHub page click on the latest release. And in this most recent release, they actually um, created an um, executable file that runs on Windows. So you can just download this and then run uh, the software. Uh, on my Windows machine, it wasn't sure who the publisher was. So I had to give it permission to say, yes, I trust this publisher, run the software. Since then, it's worked uh, very smoothly. They also include the source code here. Uh, but if you're installing it on a different platform, the wiki is where you want to go uh, and the introduction section, because this is going to explain how to install it. Maybe if you aren't using the execu 
uh, executable file on Windows. If you're trying to install it using uh, the actual code that's in GitHub that you can download, as well as if you're installing it um, on Mac or on Linux. I've done it both ways. Uh, before they had the exe file, I installed it directly from the source using command line. Uh, and as long as you follow their prompts, it works really well, at least on Windows, and it's a pretty smooth install. One of the changes that they made with this edition is that a VLC, which is kind of a, a video uh, player or type software, is no longer required in general. So in the past, with other releases, you had to install this software regardless of if you were planning to code audio and video. Qualcoder uh, supports coding of text, images, audio, and video. And so now, if all you're planning to code is text and potentially images, you don't have to install this other piece of software, which is free um, if you did need it. It's only now required for audio and video coding. So once you get this installed and you open uh, Qualcoder, this is what you're going to see. Uh, it should take you directly to the landing page within this software, which is their action log, which spells out everything you've done uh, within Qualcoder in a specific uh, session that you have this open. So right off the bat, uh, we can all see on this screen, as well as um, anyone who is on Zoom, we can see that aesthetically Qualcoder is not as pleasing as potentially some of the paid for softwares. Uh, it looks a lot, I was talking to one of my colleagues uh, earlier today, mm -hmm. it looks a lot uh, like what you would ex what you would see maybe if you'd opened older like Windows software, like in the 90s, uh, but it works really well, um, even though aesthetically it's not as pleasing as uh, we might want. I'm going to minimize this just a little bit so we can um, see it a little bit better. So once you've installed it, before you start adding any files for coding, uh, maybe you have um, an idea of what you want your project to be, but before adding those in, you'll want to actually create a project. I'm not going to do this since I have my test project up, but you would just click project, create new project, and choose where you want to save it. After you do that, you can add a project memo where you describe what this project is, so it's clear, maybe if you have different versions of your project, you can differentiate between those. And this gets stored within this data. Once you create a project, uh, it's going to uh, be added to um, your computer. And so mine happens to be saved in desktop under a Qualcoder fo folder and test project two. Uh, when we see this, we can see any audio we add gets put here, images, video, this is the data, as well as all of the documents that I've added so far. Uh, so these documents, uh, they get added into this folder, which means any changes made to them wouldn't affect the original version of the document that you have. Uh, but to access this, at least within Windows, you would just click this um, executable file. Uh, there's also a link if you're running it from the command line that you would just double click. Usually it's some type of shortcut and you can then open uh, the Qualcoder project uh, and have it on your screen here. Once you've created your project, you can take a look at the settings by clicking project and settings. There's a few different options you might want to consider. Uh, you can change your language, uh, your font and the size of that font. You can also choose whether you want to back up the project folder every time it's opened. Uh, I've turned that off just for this demo, but you can back it up for a set number of times. So if you did need to go back to an older version of uh, the project that you were working on, you can do that. And another option, which I'm going to talk about uh, near the end, but I guess I can talk about it here since we're on settings, is you can add other coders. The challenge, though, with Qualcoder is collaboration isn't as smooth as uh, with some of the other Cactus software options uh, because Qualcoder doesn't allow for real-time collaboration. So if this software was installed on a lab computer, one student comes in and maybe codes interviews, they choose their name, they log off, um, another student then maybe has the same login to that lab computer, it's somehow a shared computer like that, they could then choose themselves as a coder, code the same data without seeing what their colleague had done. But since it's not real time and it's connected to a specific um, kind of uh, version of the system, uh, that can be a little bit more challenging. 
So unless a computer is very clearly shared and they're using the same login information, what Qualcoder recommends people do if they need some type of collaboration is to zip the project folder and then share that with um, whoever your collaborators are. Um, so hopefully uh, at some point, more real-time collaboration would become possible. I did try to test whether there could be collaboration if Qualcoder was saved within the cloud, working with one of my other colleagues on a, on a project where we were looking at some survey data, uh, and it just didn't seem to work. Even though we both were accessing the file at different times, uh, it still wasn't saving our changes when it was stored in the cloud. So just keep that in mind if you are needing to collaborate on coding. The easiest option, if you don't have a 100% shared computer, is just to zip the project file, export it, zip it, and then share it across. Uh, with your other collaborators. Okay, so now that we have this new project and we have added our settings, there are a few different stages we can move on to. We can either add in more files, we can add demographic information or attributes. Uh, we could start coding what's already in here. Uh, for this case, what I'm going to do is add attributes first. So within Qualcoder, attributes are the information that can either describe the files that you're coding or the cases, uh, the cases are maybe the interviewees or the survey respondents that you're working with. So it could be demographic information. So to add that demographic information, what you can do is click project and import, and you can import what's called a survey. In Qualcoder, they use survey in two ways. You could import a, uh, a CSV of maybe survey responses that also includes demographic information, and Qualcoder is going to make an attempt to differentiate between that attribute or demographic information and actual question responses. You can then edit that as you need, but you can also import a survey of just that demographic information. So I'm going to click Import Survey, and I'm going to grab these sample cases and put them in here. So it's going to show me what this is looking like where I have the case number, I have uh, self-identified gender, uh, self-identified department, and then time at UI. And remember, this, is, um, this information is uh, kind of just anonymized and randomized. This isn't actually connected to the actual respondents of the files we're going to look at. Once we click OK, it'll say the survey has been imported. And I can view this by clicking Files and Cases and going to Manage Attributes. So I can see it's identified. There are three demographic categories, gender, department, and time at UI. I could add another attribute by clicking this plus sign. Maybe I forgot to have college in this file. Uh, maybe I wanted to specify something like um, uh, PhD, uh, you know, type of PhD or something like that. You can add in whatever additional categories you want. In addition, if you didn't have a CSV file where you uh, had all of these attributes stored, you could just come to this files and cases, manage attributes, and just manually put in the name of the attribute you want and choose whether it's a character or whether it's a numeric variable. So once we've done that, we can start to load our files in. So for the sake of this demonstration, I already have files in here. We're just going to upload one uh, just so that it didn't take too much time. So to upload the files that you want to code, you would go to Files and Cases and then click Manage Files. I already have uh, five files in here. Uh, when you're looking at this page, you can double click in like the memo box and say for this specific file, maybe you want to describe um, something unique about it that you want to make sure remains connected to that information in Qualcoder. When we're thinking about doing this qualitative data analysis, things like memos and annotations can be really important because the researcher can then use that information when they're interpreting their results and doing that analysis. It might be some information that would be useful for them to remember. So we're going to upload a file. Uh, we're going to click this icon. Uh, if you hover over any icons in Qualcoder, it'll tell you what, um, what's going to happen when you click on it. So we'll import a file. In this case, the only one not in here is this file, um, file actually four. So we will upload file four, and it gets uploaded right away. We can also see over here on the right-hand side this case box. What this lets us do is 
assign a case, so a row of that demographic data that we imported to a specific file, so that when we're doing our analysis or running reports, we can potentially filter our data and filter our codes based on specific characteristics of the files we're looking at or the respondents. The way that we use things like cases and attributes is going to differ based on the type of qualitative data analysis you're doing. Uh, if you're maybe coding interview data or survey data where you have a, a specific respondent who has these different uh, attributes and you want to look at those, you're going to use this very differently than maybe if you were doing some type of content analysis where you downloaded all of the articles published in a specific newspaper on a specific topic, the way you represent the attributes and the cases might look a little bit different. So this is focusing in this demo is focused a little bit more on coding interview data, uh, but you can still use Qualcoder for things like content analysis where you maybe don't have uh, respondents or participants that you're working with. So the easiest way to assign a case is to click files and cases and go to manage cases because we can see we have six cases right now based on that CSV file we uploaded. We can see uh, what the gender of that respondent or interview participant was, their department and their time at the U of I. To attach a file, we would double click in the file box, choose the file and say add selected files to case and then click OK. We could then do that for each of these. And potentially, if you had more than one data source, so maybe you had three interviews with a specific participant, you could attach all of those files. Maybe each of these different cases is a different newspaper. You had five articles from the New York Times. You might attach all five of those to that case. You had five from the Wall Street Journal. You'd attach all five to that case. Um, this is, I'm not going to do this for all of these just for the sake of time. But again, you just double click, you choose whichever file add the files to your case, and then click OK. You can do the same thing by double clicking and removing a file. Uh, you can try to auto assign the file text to case. I didn't uh, take much time looking at how to do that, but the, the wiki on the Qualcoder GitHub page steps you through the instructions for how to do that. So now that we have our demographic information or our attributes in Qualcoder, we have files we can code, as well as started to make connections between the cases and the files we're looking at, we can now add codes. To do that, we would click coding and we could choose between coding text. In this case, all that's in here are text files. We could also code images as well as audio and video. Uh, for text, uh, files like um, Word documents, uh, Text files, uh, RTF seem to work very uh, work really well in Qualcoder. PDFs are a little bit more tricky. Uh, the it, it seemed to when I was testing this add a lot of unnecessary kind of characters to ends of lines and things like that. Uh, the wiki also specifies uh, if there are any uh, specific file types that wouldn't work or would work for images as well as audio and video. But we're going to focus on coding text. So I've already added in some initial codes. And again, uh, as I said at the beginning, this research was focused on uh, research and data management support needs. So most of these codes have to do with that. If we click on any file, we can see what codes have been applied so far by hovering over them. So this line that says the ability to, ability to engage more students in research, but in a meaningful way, I've coded that as undergraduate researchers. Uh, the next sentence, I'm one person, I need text. Um, I mean, at the moment, my lab is held together. It's pretty much a pyramid. Hovering over that, we can see that's been coded with staff. If you've already coded something, you can right click and unmark, which uncodes it uh, or removes that code. And if you wanted to code something, you would simply highlight the line of text, however much you want, and then you would click whichever code and it automatically does that. You can change the colors of codes if you wanted to by right-clicking, changing the code color, um, but these are just the default colors that it's given us. When you've created a code, which you would do by coming into this box, right-clicking and saying, add a new code. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna add a code named money. Some people talk about needing uh, more funding. You would just right-click, add code, and then do this. 
You can also right click and add um, a memo. So we can view or edit a memo. When we're doing qualitative data analysis, memos are really important because this is gonna describe what the code is and how we would apply it. So this just helps us if we have similar codes to keep them distinct from each other. So right now I only have one code with a memo and it's staff. And it just says, can include grad students, undergraduate students, postdocs, technicians, staff members. Uh, that's different maybe than an undergraduate researcher code, which uh, specifies a specific um, or a very distinct type of potential employee or someone who's working on a project in this case. When you're in any file, you can see how many times a code has been applied uh, and which codes uh, those are. Now, if we needed to um, change a code. So let's say right now um, I have some codes related to databases because two of our respondents talked specifically about the need for simplicity and automation in databases. But as I'm looking at this, this person is saying um, just technology in general, where you can easily and rapidly scan in copies of data into a, an electronic file. So maybe instead of creating a different category, I might just rename this. So categories can be used to hierarchically uh, arrange and organize your codes. So I can rename this category to something very generic. You know, maybe it's just like software or like technology tools or something like that. When I do that, then I could come back here and just highlight this and say they're interested in uh, simplicity related to this. Um, they also want to be able to transfer Excel data. Um, I don't have a code for that right now, but I could create one. If I wanted to create a new category, so we can see we have U of I, we have staff, undergraduate researchers, workshops, info sessions, emails, as well as money and space. Maybe within the U of I category, if I right click on it, I can add a new category to that category and name it uh, infrastructure and click OK. And then if I wanted to add codes to that category, I'd simply click and drag and drop. So you can uh, reorder codes as much as you want. You can drag categories with codes into other categories. But once something is a code, you can't automatically make it a category. Once something's a category, you can't make it into a code. You'd have to recreate it from scratch and then go back through and recode those things, which is one of the, the drawbacks of QualCoder uh, is that kind of changing your mind halfway through uh, as to how you're going to categorize or code something can be a little bit challenging uh, to fix. Could you merge two um, codes together? You can. So if we right clicked on money, um, <clears throat> think, let's see. I know that there was a way, I didn't look at that, but I think if you, like if we were to click simplicity and automation, uh, and drag it onto another code. It's really small on the screen, but it says merge code, merge simplicity into code automation. You could then do that. So you can at least merge two codes, but you can't um, kind of change one into a category or something like that. And I believe you might also, I don't think you can merge categories because it's just gonna drop it as a subcategory. From this coding page, there are a few other tools you can use. This search box allows you to search for text across files. Uh, you can say, uh, make my search case sensitive. You could search all files or just the one you're in. Uh, these little kind of magic wand icons are give you the option to auto code. So you could automatically apply a code if specific text appeared within the files. Uh, one of the drawbacks with this is that auto coding is case sensitive. And so you would need to make sure that you share, uh, you include uh, maybe the capital and the lowercase version. So if we needed to do that, um, let's just say auto code with exact text, we will auto code. Uh, this is going to kind of mess up our data, but we'll click challenges and we'll say auto code. Maybe we wanted to auto code anything that mentioned um, problems or problem. So if you had different versions of the same word, you could type one in and then put a pipe um, and then you know do the capital version, the lowercase version, singular, plural, et cetera. I don't know if this word even appears in here. Uh, we could click OK and say code this across all of the files. And then if any of those appeared, 
it would um, show up as an autocode. So in this case, it did. In file four, um, someone here mentioned problems. If we needed to, we could um, delete this code and then maybe highlight the entire sentence to make sure there's context. But this at least gives you the option to find very clear words that might reflect some aspect of your research project without having to go through and read all of them, at least at first glance. Uh, there are some options to undo things you've done in Qualcoder, uh, but they only stay um, kind of live so long as you remain on the page you're on. So if I were to navigate to reports and try to run a report on my codes, then come back here, I couldn't undo that auto coding. Same thing if I closed Qualcoder and came back, um, I couldn't undo that. So that's why uh, if you think, if you want to have the ability to go back to what you've done before, that's why within the project settings, you might want to consider backing up uh, the project file, project folder, so you can have access to those older editions. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about reports. Qualcoder offers, as you can see here, a handful of reports that you can run. Uh, the usefulness of those is dependent on kind of what you're doing with your data, what you've done so far. The GitHub wiki page includes descriptions of each of the different reports that you can run. Uh, we're just going to demo a couple of them today. So the first report is just a basic coding report. So this shows the results of coded text within files or cases. You can run a basic report and maybe look at all of the files. I'm just going to click in here and hit Control A, Command A if you're on a Mac to highlight everything and look at how uh, a specific subset of codes was applied. So maybe I wanna look at this uh, technology tools, automation and simplicity. I'm control or command clicking on the codes that I want. Uh, and to actually run this report, there's no run button. It's this little cog and gear button, um, which when you click search, it actually runs this. So this report is showing us across all of these files and all of these cases. Here are the specific um, portions of that uh, qualitative information that's received uh, the codes within this technology tools category. We could get a little bit more uh, detailed in our report um, by choosing a different um, arrangement category up here. We could arrange um, what's called um, kind of coded text with each case. So we could do something like categories by case and kind of see what that looks like. And that creates hard on a smaller laptop, but it creates a different little field here, um, which if we had maybe more than one category, we would, let's see what that looks like. Um, we would be able to see, here's the technology tools category, the U of I category, the infrastructure category, how are things being applied? Um, it just gives you kind of more of a matrix uh, or table view of how your codes are being applied. Uh, I'm going to remove this just so that there's less information on the screen. When you're running a report, you could have, when you were coding, identify certain sections or certain coded uh, sentences or paragraphs as important uh, and then just see those. You could show statistics on how things have been coded. You can also click the box for text context. Uh, when you do that, it's going to show you the coded section in bold, but then provide uh, a section that's 250 words total. So you can see where those coded sections appear within the context of the file that you've coded. And again, these reports are focused only on text files or textual data. So they're going to look different if you're coding images, audio, or video. Another option uh, in terms of a report that you could do, which really wouldn't work for this case, but you could do a coding comparison. And so if you had multiple coders working uh, asynchronously, not at the same time on the same file, uh, you could compare how two different coders or three different coders applied codes across a specific file. Uh, so if you need that type of uh, result, um, and that type of data, you can run that report. Uh, another option is 
Qual Coder can generate charts that show you how information has been coded. So under coding charts, we could say, show me a sunburst uh, that gives me the code frequency. This is going to pull up. Uh, it's really small. I can't zoom in um, here, but it's showing us a sunburst chart uh, and a kind of a visual representation of our categories and then the codes within them and how many times they've been applied. So the, um, the simplicity code has been applied three times. Its parent is technology tools. This is just a visual representation of this. Uh, the usefulness of these different charts, again, is going to depend on what you're trying to say with this data. And all charts um, and potentially all reports uh, might not be relevant for what you're looking at. The last report type of report that I want to highlight is this database queries option. Uh, database queries allow you to access this entire uh, database as a um, SQLite file. And so you could develop your own um, query if you have that. Um, that's not something that I have the capacity to do. So for my demo, I'm going to show you one of their default queries uh, that they already have saved in here. So maybe I'll select the um, the coded text with each case. Um, it's going to show our codes and the names, and we're going to click this little gear icon again. And we're going to see here's the code, here how the case it was applied to, the position in the text, the ID of the file, the actual text that was coded, and then the owner of that code, so whoever applied it. I could then uh, export this to a file uh, and save it so that I could access this report again. So depending on what you want to do, uh, if you find this type of database query uh, option useful, you can definitely build your own based on what's in here um, or use one of their default queries. The last thing that I want to show you kind of within Qualcoder is that ability to import and export information. At the beginning, we talked about how to import a survey, which in our case was that demographic information in a CSV file. Uh, but if you were coming to Qualcoder for something like NVivo or a different software, you could import the code book you used there. You could try to import the project, which still has a little bit of uh, a few bugs to work out, as long as they're within this, um, this same uh, standard right here. But you can also export your project. Uh, this would be maybe if you were uh, collaborating, you had more than one coder and you were sharing a zipped version of this project. Uh, maybe if you mainly worked on Qualcoder on your desktop and you wanted to make sure you had access to it on your laptop when you were traveling, you could export it. You can also export your code book and then import that or import the project in a, to a different qualitative data analysis piece of software. Um, and it gives you a couple of other ways you could export your code book as OT, ODT files, um, as an ODT file with those memos that described each code. So we already talked about uh, collaboration um, and kind of how to do those project memos if you wanted to do those and the import and export. Um, let's see. Under files and cases, uh, you can also click manage journals. Uh, depending on the type of research you're doing and qualitative analysis, you might want to keep journals describing what you're noticing in the code, in the um, coding that you're doing, maybe similarities between the different files or the different cases. Uh, you could use a journal directly within Qualcoder to keep track of those. You could then export uh, all journals as a single text file. Uh, but again, you could also do the same thing using a different word processing software. You can also, if you wanted to, uh, again, depending on what you're doing, they do allow you to um, add references and import reference information if that's valuable to uh, the type of work that you're doing. And so if we went back to this action log, we would see everything that we've done so far uh, just within this specific uh, session. Uh, and this resets every time uh, you reopen Qualcoder. So that's all that I have for you today. Um, Qualcoder is very um, kind of easy to jump into once you get it installed. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to learn kind of how to apply the codes 
but that uh, the GitHub page in the wiki is really useful. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions and covers a lot of what we talked about today. Uh, if you're not if you're not sure the type of software you want to use, Qualcoder can be a good introduction since it is free uh, and you can install it on your own computer. Uh, but there are some limitations that proprietary software um, kind of solves uh, that Qualcoder just hasn't been able to do yet. Uh, but in terms of a free open source option that allows you to do a lot of the same uh, type of work with uh, qualitative information, I think it's a, it's a good option uh, depending on what your goals are for your project. Any questions about Qualcoder? Yes, Evan. So if you um, set up a project and then you end up with two people working on it in separate instances mm -hmm. in parallel, do you know of a way to be able to merge both back together? With yes, um, there is, let's see, I'm not sure. I was looking, I had that on here, but I didn't end up talking about it just because I wasn't sure. Um, there is an option to merge Qualcoder projects. Um, I'm not sure if um, kind of how well that works. Um, it wasn't something that I um, tested, but it's under this imports and exports, exports merge Qualcoder projects. Um, it steps you through how to do that. Um, and it could be an option. It just, they suggest just backing it up before you do that. Um, but that could be an option, as you said, for collaboration. If you had two people working on different instances and you wanted to merge those in, and maybe you weren't as concerned about um, kind of the, that simultaneous work, but that could work too. Um, and I believe that if they are merged, as long as they have, it seems like from what I read here, as long as they have distinct names within their settings, that hopefully those remain attached to the codes that each of those each of those coders applied. So you could then still run those comparison reports and see who coded this as this, who coded this, is there overlap, uh, and how those codes were applied. Any other questions? Yes, if you have another one, go for it. Yeah, I have another. Uh, do you know anything about the developer? Is this um, uh, you know anything about the developer? Is, is this like supported at some institution or? Um, yeah, kind of... let's see. I mean, not off the top of my head. I think I tried to look for this, but I only showed you all the GitHub page since that's where the wiki is, but they do have a website um, which tells us a little bit more about Qualcoder. Um, as well as links to studies that have used Qualcoder. Um, most of these are theses and dissertations where students are using this, um, but I don't believe it's kind of hosted on uh, any, like, I don't know if it's, a, I don't think it's affiliated with a specific university. Um, I think it's someone who just uh, kind of needed to create the software. Um, there's not a lot of information that I found about this person. Um, but it is a tool that over time has gained um, a little bit more traction. Um, and I think that compared to some other tools, since it is on GitHub and the code is freely accessible, as you can see up here, 45 people have um, forked the Qualcoder data. So they might be adding in their own information. All that this um, the creator asks is that you share any of those updates so that other people can incorporate them too. Um, Depending on uh, kind of where you're at with your qualitative data analysis, uh, as you're exploring software, one of the best places that I've found to learn about the different options is uh, the University of Illinois. Uh, their, uh, their librarian uh, for the social sciences, Jessica Hagman, is someone I have worked with in some of my uh, professional association work. She has a great qualitative data analysis software guide. Uh, that includes uh, descriptions of free software, paid software, and web-based software, and then gives a really brief kind of overview comparison of what the software can do. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. Um, some of the other ones that people tend to really like are uh, free ones are things like Tagit. Uh, Tagit's limitations are that you can't code uh, like multimedia data. Uh, it's really just text-based. Uh, that works either within, you would upload your files to their server or you'd run Tagit on your own server and do that. 
Um, and then there's other a couple of other free options as well as the proprietary or paid for, for options, which depending on what you're doing might suit your needs more than something like Qualcoder, which is um, free and useful, but not as robust as NVivo or Max QDA um, or Atlas TI. Any other questions? What uh, other software have you used, uh, Kalisa, in, in your work? Uh, the other software that I've uh, I've demoed is um, I demoed uh, Max QDA. Uh, there's a free version. I think that's uh, QDA Lite. Uh, I've used Qualcoder, um, and most of my work has been was focused on this other project that um, I mentioned at the beginning, where I, we had this data from, is that we were trying to um, figure out a way to to code some of these interviews. In our case, we actually ended up using uh, a, a software tool built by one of our other librarians, an associate dean, Devin Becker, uh, which was oral history as data, which is also available on GitHub. Uh, this allows you to analyze and publish coded oral history and qualitative interviews. Uh, so our coding wasn't as um, kind of at the sentence level or the word level when we used this but it allowed us to easily visualize our, um, just use spreadsheets to code our data, visualize the coded segments across the six of us who are working on a project. Uh, so this is another example of a tool that you can use. Uh, it works very, very differently than Qualcoder since you're really only working within a spreadsheet uh, to code different segments of text, uh, but uh, it is a useful tool too, uh, depending on if you want kind of a, a visual representation of that data once you're done with it. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Well, if anyone in person or Zoom has questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll, I'll do my best to, uh, to help you find an answer. I am very much a novice when it comes to qualitative data analysis software. I definitely haven't used it as much as uh, other individuals on this campus, that's for sure. Uh, but I can do my best to answer your question or help you find an answer. And the recording from today will be posted on the library's YouTube page. So you can always go back to that or share it with uh, any of your colleagues who potentially wanted to attend but couldn't be here. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.